This is kind of a long video, but I'm going to show you exactly how to change your strings on your nylon string guitar. We're going to go through the whole process. We're going to take off the strings, clean the guitar, oil the fretboard, clean the fretboard, put the strings back on, tie it onto the bridge, and I'll show you an easy way to tie it. And uh, it'll stay there. You won't have to worry about it slipping. Also at the top, when you tie it onto the tuning pegs, I'll show you exactly how I do that. Very simply, it stays put, comes off easily when you're ready to take it off. Now what we're going to do is just take the strings off one by one. I'll start with the low E string. This is a simple process. You can do it by hand like this, or you can do it with the string winder. I prefer using a string winder because it's faster. Then when you get all the strings off, we just start pulling them off the bottom. I like to start with a high E string. And then remove every string in order like this because of the way I tie it on. And I'll show you a little later how I tie it on and interlock what we call the tails of the strings. At this point, I just take the old strings, wrap them all together, and throw them away. Let's have some ambiance here. <laughs> I'm going to light some candles just for fun. Here's what the guitar looks like when you get all the strings off. The next thing I'm going to do is clean the guitar. So I get a damp rag or washcloth or something like that and just wipe the guitar down. I get all the nooks and crannies and wipe it all down and uh, around the bridge, get the dirt off and the dust. This is the best time to get underneath the strings, wipe all the fingerprints off or whatever might have been on the guitar. the sides, the back of the guitar. Now we'll clean the headstock. We're just detailing the guitar at this point. You can get as detailed as you want. After the guitar is basically clean on the outside, now we're going to oil the fretboard and you can use any kind of oil. You could use olive oil if you really want to. Here's some almond oil, which is really light. I've used it before, but also here's some old English oil that I like. You can use it on cabinets and wood furniture and that kind of thing. Now what I'm going to do is just put the oil on the fretboard just like this. Not too much. Then I take that little square of paper towel and I start to work the oil into the fretboard. 
This is an ebony fretboard. It's very nice. So I want to work it all the way into it. Now it doesn't matter if you have an ebony fretboard or a maple fretboard. You can use this on any fretboard that isn't sealed. Right here what I'm doing is I'm working the oil right next to the frets, right into there. I just take my time. I do this about every year. You can see the little bit of dirt that's coming off there. Now I'm going to take the excess off. Still working it into the wood. See how shiny it is? <laughs> right off the fretboard. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm taking my fingernails and going up and down the side of each fret here and getting a little bit of the goo off or whatever it is that's right there next to the frets. That's what it looks like. <laughs> As you can see, there's little dents where I play the guitar, and these are just over 45 years of playing the guitar. The guitar definitely has this personality about it now. As we zoom in and get really close to the guitar, you can see the imperfections in it now. But when you're back a few feet, no one really sees it. All right, this is the sixth string, and I'm going to tie it on this is very very simple I'm just going to loop it around once under itself there now the string is a little stiff we don't want to put a kink in the string so I try to be really careful about that it's being a little bit stubborn you can see that tail. I've got the end of the string there, a little bit of it. It's going to go underneath the next string. I'm going to work on that a little bit more. I'm not very happy with the way it's going. There it is. That's a little better. I've got this in slow motion so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. You can see from this angle exactly what I've done and how the string looks. Now let's put the next string on. This is the A string. I decide which end I'm going to put in there. Put it in the hole underneath that tail. I'm going to tie this on the same way, except now I'm going to wrap this around itself two times. Once and twice. I'm going to be careful to pull that tight. Now see how that tail of the E string is underneath the loop of the A string. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and attach the E string and put a little tension on that E string so it actually um, tightens up a little bit. Now what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the string with four fingers. I'm going to start tightening it on. There we go. Now I start to tighten this on the left-hand side of the hole. And then after it goes around one time, I push that string over on top of itself so it locks it in. So it locks it in place. Now 
Now this string, see how it's winding? And I'm guiding it with my left hand. I'm also holding it with my, my small fingers there and guiding it with my thumb. I usually pluck it like that so that I can listen to it and see how much tension is on it. This is what the string looks like when there's some tension on it now. You'll notice that the E string is starting to tighten up a little bit. Now you can see how it's over on itself. The string is over the top of it, like that. This is what locks the string into place. You don't need to do any fancy tying. You don't need to do any knots. You don't need to put the string back through the hole or anything like that. Here's another angle of the bridge with the tension on the E string. Now we'll put the other strings on. Let's see, we've got the A string on, so this one is now the D string. Okay, I've got that one on. I do it the same way I did the A string. The A string tail goes underneath the D string. Now we've got the G string. Same thing. You can see how I'm slowly feeding that string through itself. Two times. Pull it tight. And the D string is underneath the G string. Next, the B string. We do it exactly the same way. Pull a little bit of the string out. Loop it under itself twice like this. See that? I've tried to do this several times so that you can see exactly what it looks like. The tail of every string is underneath the next string over. E string is under the A string. A string is under the D. D is under the G. G is under the B. I was thinking about putting the E string on but then I realized all of these strings are in my way. So I'm going to go ahead and put tension on all of these strings. You notice that before I actually start to tighten the string on, I measure the string with my fingers. The low E string, I use three fingers to measure. And every other string, I use four fingers to measure. Just like that, right there. And then I put the string on and it loops around several times. Here's the G string. I'm measuring the G string. The B string. Measure the B. Loop it around. Guide it into place. This is a view of the bridge and what the strings look like with some tension on them. You'll notice they're starting to tighten down. This is exactly what we want them to look like. The B string tail is sticking out. You will see what we do with the B string tail as soon as I get the E string on. Now here's a view of the headstock and what each string looks like. This is how I've looped the string over itself and locked it into place. The same thing happens with the clear strings as well as the wound strings. Now we're going to attach the E string onto the bridge. This time what I'm going to do is loop the string the opposite way so that the tail comes out going up the guitar like that, the opposite direction that the other tails are going. Now you can see that the B string tail is under the E string, and the E string tail is free at the moment. Let's go ahead and put tension on the E string. I'm measuring it now, four fingers, gives me just plenty enough string, not too much. We're going to eventually cut the tails of these strings off, but not yet. 
just in case something slips or we have to retie something. This is a view of exactly what it looks like at this point. There's tension on every string. We're not tuned up yet. We've just got a little bit of tension on everything. Everything's starting to tighten up and it looks really good. Now I'm just moving these strings around a little bit to get them to make sure that they're tight. Now what we want to do is we want to loosen the B string. Take the tension off of it so that I can lift up this wrapping and put the tail of the E string under the B string just like this. There we go. All right, now it's popped into place. See where it is? Now let's tune up the guitar. I'm going to go ahead and use a tuner on my phone. Here's the E string, A string. Let's do it from the tuner's perspective and I'll show you exactly what I do. Now whenever you see the pitch dropping, it's because the string is stretching and tightening up at the bridge and also at the headstock. The only thing I'm doing is tightening the string. I'm not even, I'm not detuning the string at all. All the detuning that's happening is the stretching of the string and the tightening of the string. You can see that it, it just falls as the string stretches. You'll notice that as I tighten these strings up, I go above the pitch. I love this app. This is a great app. I'll put a link in the description of the ClearTune app so you can see exactly what I'm using here. So as you can see on this G string, I'm going to go above the pitch and leave it there. The pitch with these kinds of strings because as you can see the string just stretches like crazy. It just keeps dropping. <laughs> okay, here's the B string. We loosen to get the E string tail in there. A flat, A, B flat. And now up to B, I went above C, all the way to C sharp. See how it drops? Okay, I overshot that B string a lot. That's okay though. Now we're working on the E string. I just pluck the string and it just drops like that. It's amazing. These strings take about two days, something like that, three days of stretching and playing the strings so that they can actually be played. So that you can actually make it through a song without having the guitar detune on you. So I usually do this about three or four days at least, maybe even a week before I have to perform. All right, I'm going to go back and check the bridge, see how everything's tightening up starting to look good. That E string is still a little bit loose, so it'll tighten up eventually. I'm trying to help it along there a little bit. Continue to stretch as the string stretches and pulls this way. It's going to tighten these ties up, and that's part of why the string changes so much, because this all has to tighten up. I'm not going to take and uh, cut off the tails yet, just in case something happens and I have to retie everything.
the strings so that it stretches. Instead of detuning the string, I will just pull the string. This is what the guitar looks like after we get the strings on and get it cleaned up. Now remember, this is a 45-year-old guitar, so it's got defects and dings in it and problems with it. It's just the way it is. It even has a couple of cracks. Once I'm sure that all the strings are going to stay in place and nothing is going to slip, then I'll cut the tails off. It's looking nice and tight now. Looks great. I'm giving you time on purpose so that you can look at this. If you have any questions, um, you can just very carefully study the guitar, study the strings, the direction that they're going, how they're tied on. Now that I've zoomed in on the headstock of this guitar, I can really see the flaws in it now. I didn't realize it had so many chips and dings in the finish. Also, it looks like I need to clean up my tuners a little bit. They look a little greasy. Now let's cut the tails off these strings. They've been on for a couple of days, and I'll show you exactly how I do this. I take some wire cutters, or sometimes we call them dykes, and you want to be really careful around the finish of the guitar so you don't bang it up. Some people like to leave the tails and just leave them sloppy like that, but personally, I like to have a clean looking guitar. Now let's turn the guitar around and cut these two tails off. I don't want them catching on my sweater when I'm playing it. You can see what everything looks like, how tight everything is. All the tails are interlocked in the string above or below. And that's exactly what we want because now these strings will not even move. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Take care.